Uh, let's start out with the gastric bypass first because it explains a lot of anatomy and physiology. So your esophagus, your swallowing tube, starts in the back of your throat, goes through your chest. When it gets into the belly, it expands, becomes a stomach. And then it gets small again and becomes a small intestine. About 16 to 20 feet of small intestine all coiled up in there. Your liver's on the right side. There's two tubes that come out of the liver that carry bile. The liver makes bile and puts this bile into the first part of your intestine. Bile works like a detergent, like a soap to help break down the oils and fats in your food. Your gallbladder's here. Sometimes it gets stones in it. One of those stones gets wedged in there, that's when people get sick with their gallbladder and have to get it out. Your pancreas is a digestive gland behind everything on the left side and it adds into that same little opening enzymes that help you digest fats and proteins and sugars. Okay? So we swallow the food, comes down the esophagus into the stomach. The stomach does not absorb any nutrients. The stomach's just a storage bag, lets us eat as fast as we can shovel it in and then run in case something bigger wants our food, I guess. There's a muscle at the bottom called the pylorus. It's like a muscular ring or a donut. It squeezes the bottom of the stomach closed. And normally it's closed. If you look in there with a scope, it just looks like a little pinpoint. A Couple times a minute, that muscle will relax, let out about a tablespoon of food, and then squeeze down again. It has its own rhythm. And that rhythm is determined by how much fat and sugar is in the food. Little sensors in this area. So that little bit of food comes out, mixes with the bile and the pancreas enzymes, and that chemically starts digestion. Then as the food moves through your small intestine, the nutrients are absorbed into your bloodstream through the microscopic blood vessels that line the wall of the intestine. Now in the gastric bypass, we separate your stomach into two stomachs, a very small upper stomach that's separated from the main body of the stomach. Okay, we don't take out anything, we just close those ends off so that they don't leak and the two never join again. We measure from the beginning of the intestine down about one foot, and then we divide this like we're cutting this 16-foot hose at one foot. We take the far end, the end that would keep going, and we bring it up to here so that that X ends up up there. So I'm going to bring this end up like this. This end here, we're going to we're going to make a connection between the opening of the, or the little stomach and a connection be between the little stomach and the small intestine and sew those two connections together. Make an opening between the, in the intestine, make an opening in the stomach, and sew those two openings together. We're going to make a connection down here. Okay, So that's how the, the operation goes. The operation works mainly because the upper pouch is small. It's about as big as your thumb, okay? Holds about half a sandwich. Not half a submarine sandwich, but half a white bread sandwich, and you're full. By the end of the first year, maybe the whole sandwich. That's a big meal after this, or a meal that's about that big, okay? Little piece of chicken, little, you know, little rice, little beans. Less than a cup, and you're full. This part of the stomach wall is very muscular. It doesn't stretch good. When it starts to stretch, you'll get a sensation of fullness. There is no more room. You're completely done. Put your fork in the sink. Okay? Some patients after this tell me that if they're, if they're chewing on something and they notice that they're starting to feel full, they'll actually take their napkin and take out what's in their mouth. Okay? After this, the difference between full and uncomfortable is small. Okay? So listen to your body. When it says full, you're done. Okay? For me, full means slow down and start planning dessert. You know, full doesn't mean done. But after this, full really means done. Okay, if you keep eating, the food stacks up in your esophagus, you'll burp, it'll be in your hand. Okay, so listen to your body. When it says full, no kidding. This opening between the upper pouch and the intestine, I make it 12 millimeters, about a half inch, about the size of an M&M, so that the stomach empties solid slowly, so that you get a feeling of fullness from a small meal. When you feel full, you feel satisfied a couple hours before you feel like eating again. Controls the rate of emptying of solids. But because this opening is restricted, you have to understand that anything that you swallow bigger than that, hunk of apple, steak, anything bigger than an unbroken up M&M is coming back up. Okay? Most women chew good. Us guys, we rip off a piece, mash it twice to make it wet, bend our knees and swallow, and that won't work. But we'll get patients who have two or three years out, lost all their weight, all but forgotten about us, and 
they'll be late for some big meeting at work and worried about everything that's not ready for the big meeting and really hungry and they'll wolf something down without thinking. They'll come right back up and they'll look at that and go, I didn't chew that at all. You know, it didn't kill them, but nobody likes to throw up. Okay, so this means you need to sit down for breakfast. There's a new concept, huh? You know, this means you need 10 minutes to eat your lunch where you're not doing three other jobs. You know, sit down, take a breath, say a prayer, let go a little bit of the rush of the day. Don't bring it in the meal, take it out on the food. Okay? And this is something that all of a sudden has to change one day. Kind of a lifetime of behavior has to all of a sudden change one day. So while you're getting ready for this, start thinking about that. You know, how to slow myself down a little bit, how to pay more attention to what I'm doing. Don't eat when you're driving. Don't eat when you're mad. That's when people tend to make mistakes after this, okay? Um, now, normally the food goes this way. This muscle lets out just a little bit at a time. Immediately it mixes with the bile and the pancreas enzymes. Now the food is going into this five-foot limb without those digestive enzymes, without that opening and closing muscle mechanism. Because of those changes, most people after bypass surgery find that food that's high in fat, food that's high in refined sugars, makes them ill. Things we would call sweets or greasy foods upset their stomach. The high fat, high sugar foods irritate this first limb of the intestine. Okay? Makes you feel shaky, sweaty, crampy, nauseated, rushy, growly, like you ate something spoiled. It lasts about an hour until the food makes it down here where the digestive enzymes are. Mixing in down here now. See, everything is. You know, liver still makes bile, pancreas makes enzymes, lower stomach makes acid. All of that is carried by this one foot and put in downstream here now. Okay, when the food meets up with that, then everything settles down. In fact, you'll still absorb those calories in the lower part of your small intestine. But next time you see that food, it probably won't look as good. You know, imagine it's kind of like getting food poisoning from chicken salad. It's a long time before chicken salad sounds like a good idea after that. So. All fried foods, anything cooked in oil, mayonnaise, salad dressings, butter, sour cream, high-fat meats like ribs and bacon, salami, cheap hamburger, fast food hamburger is half-fat. That's what makes it so good. All desserts, all pastries, all candies, cookies, cannolis, either have too much sugar, too much shortening, too much butter fat. That's what makes them so good. So after this, your dessert is strawberries. You can have chicken or fish, cook it on the grill, bake it, broil it. You can have vegetables, you can't bread them and fry them. You can have pasta, you can't have an Alfredo sauce. It's the fat. Okay, so lean meats cooked in a lean way, real fruits, real vegetables. Now the shaky, sweaty, crampy, nauseated, rushy, growly is called dumping syndrome. This term dumping syndrome was actually coined in the late 40s during a time when we used to do a lot of ulcer surgery. Remember when people used to have bleeding ulcers? Before these wonderful medicines like Zantac, Pepsid, we actually had to take out the lower part of the stomach and that's where the acid is made. And it was a very similar operation. We would just make a bigger pouch. And those patients after that surgery complained that they couldn't tolerate anything sweet or greasy. And, and uh, that was called dumping syndrome. And that was considered to be a complication of their ulcer surgery. And some people think about it as a complication of their bariatric surgery. Other people think about it as sort of a desirable side effect. Sort of helps you discipline your diet, knowing that things you shouldn't be eating anyway, the high fat, high sugar, high calorie foods will make you un uncomfortable temporarily. Okay, so this is gastric bypass, probably the most common operation done in the United States today, bariatric operation. It's been the premier operation since the mid-90s. It's been done since the 70s. Uh, and what's different now is we're able to do most of these with the laparoscopes, the fiber optic scopes. 